Hey, my name is Maddie Taylor. I've been living in this 2015 Ram Promaster for the past two plus years traveling full time with my dog Eliza. A lot has stayed the same. I have made a few changes and some things are definitely falling apart. And most importantly, I've learned a lot about what I would do if I was to build a second van. So I thought I would give you guys an updated tour now that this space is very much lived in. This Ram Promaster is the shortest of the wheelbases you can purchase. It is the 136 wheelbase and it is the 2500, which basically means it has a larger load capacity than the 1500, but a smaller one than the 3500s. It also has a high top, which is extremely convenient for tall people like myself. I am 5'10 and I have minimal insulation on both my floor and my ceiling to accommodate taller people. I built out this van in 2020 and the beginning of 2021. It took me a total of five months to build out and then I was on the road full time. So as soon as you walk in, you notice the full length mirror and that is covering the closet door to my full length closet. I also hold things like extra sheets and towels and some climbing gear in here, but honestly, it's mostly clothes. There are a few things of note up here. I'm currently sitting on my passenger swivel seat, which I pretty much always have faced towards the interior of my van as an extra seat. It's so convenient and I think these things are pretty affordable as well. I do have to crank the seat all the way down so that I can see my mirrors when I'm driving, but that just means that it's a reclinable chair as well. One of the nice things about the Ram Promaster is that all of the bulkhead storage compartments are already built in, whereas I think in the transits they're not. And so I'm able to keep so many things up here, including a stand-up paddleboard which is extremely convenient because I don't really have any other place to put it in my van and storage really is a constant game of Tetris. I have this place between my driver's seat and my closet where I keep things like a foldable table, my backpacking equipment, all of my exercise equipment. I have paint canvases and some miscellaneous odds and ends as well and so yeah I fit a lot into pretty much every single crevice I possibly can. One thing I would definitely recommend in your van if you're not doing a partition is one of these insulated blackout curtains. It is so nice for privacy and it actually really does keep the space in here either cool or hot depending on what I need. Before we move on to some of the different sections of my van, I do want to talk about the flooring and the ceiling because those are some of the biggest regrets I have about my van build. I think I prioritized headroom just a little bit too much. I ended up using 8th inch cedar planking for the ceiling, which is so beautiful, but unfortunately it's really fragile, especially where you connect the planks. As I was installing it, some of these broke, and I've even had an entire ceiling panel fall at one point in my van, which is obviously not ideal, and I think if I had used quarter inch plywood, it would have been a lot more durable long term especially as I'm driving on some crazy roads out here. The flooring is the first thing I did in my van, so it's the thing I did with the least experience. When I embarked on this van build, I had no idea what I was doing. I watched a lot of van build videos and tried to do my best research, but sometimes I didn't do enough research. For my subfloor, I installed long furring strips, and between that, I put foam insulation. The problem is that I didn't put in enough furring strips, and now I have compacted the foam insulation, so there are literally places beneath your feet where you can feel the ground move. I think a big part of this is because Eliza continuously jumps off the bed onto the same spot and so the worst place in the van is right where she lands. But it's not her fault. It's mine. I know it's my fault. The second problem that adds to this is that I only installed quarter inch plywood on top of the furring strips and foam insulation which in hindsight was so silly and I definitely should have gone with half inch plywood. This would have made it a lot thicker and more durable so that maybe I wouldn't be having this problem. And then on top of that, I went with flooring that I also regret. I went with this vinyl sticky single plank plywood that you install one by one by laying them on top of each other. And I just don't really think it's that durable. I now have cracks in my flooring that are so embarrassing. I literally have some of them covered with duct tape and a rug so that people don't see them. And you can imagine what a huge project it would be to undertake fixing all of these mistakes. I would basically have to gut my entire van. Maybe I'll be able to do it in the future, but for now, I'm kind of going to have to stick to the duct tape. Hey, it's Maddie from the future here to talk about today's sponsor, Bottle Bottle. I also have this channel's first ever giveaway of three of these water bottles that I'm going to talk more about at the very end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Bottle Bottle is a brand that sells high quality yet affordable water bottles, tumblers, shakers, and can coolers to keep you hydrated all day every day. I have the 32 ounce and the 40 ounce water bottles here and there are so many things that I love about these water bottles and I haven't had any water bottles like them. They have this really convenient dual use lid design where you can use the straw to drink from or you can pour directly. 
They also have this really awesome feature at the bottom where you can unscrew it and store things like pills, vitamins, tea bags, and even small snacks for your everyday adventures. These bottles are tested and proven to keep your beverage hot for a full 12 hours and cool for 24 hours, and they come in a lot of beautiful colors as well so that you can pick one that really suits your personality. Both the 32 ounce water bottles and the 40 ounce water bottles are double insulated stainless steel, BPA free, and dishwasher safe. Bottle Bottle is offering you guys a special discount, 15% off when you click on the link in the description box below and use my code 15MADDIET. Again, that's 15% off an already affordable and beautiful and high quality water bottle it's a pretty good deal so thank you so much to bottle bottle for sponsoring today's video and don't forget about that giveaway at the very end this side of the van is what I consider my kitchen to be and I do have a lot of room for storage this is my pantry area where I store all of my dried foods in addition to a drawer down here you can see all of the food underneath a cutting board I keep here this cabinet right here is where I keep all of my plates bowls vitamins teas and some miscellaneous things that all relate to eating or imbibing rather and one of the fun features of my van is my spice rack. I basically got a bunch of these little mason jars just on Amazon, as well as this magnetic strip that I originally was going to house my knives on. And then I just put these little labels that these jars came from on, and it creates a nice little pop of color, and it's super convenient for when I'm cooking in the kitchen. I do hang my knives, and I've never had a single knife fall. A lot of people get really worried about that, but it's safe, and I've driven some crazy roads out here. I do have some additional drawers over here. This first one is actually office supplies, so not related to kitchen, but I needed to house all of these things somewhere convenient and easily accessible. And then underneath it, I have all of my utensils and can openers and some additional spices. This last little cabinet is actually where I house all of my propane that powers the oven, which I'll get to in a second, but basically the propane is in a sealed box and then there's a hole going out the underside of my van. Propane sinks, so if there is a leak, it'll leak out into nature instead of leaking inside my home. And yes, the star feature of my kitchen is definitely my oven. I really like it because it has a three burner stove. I do end up using the oven sometimes, but what I really love is that it has a stove top just like you would at home. A lot of the vans that I've seen that don't have an oven compartment have a two burner stove or even sometimes a one burner stove. And because of how much I prioritize cooking, I really love being able to have access to three burners. I probably use the oven maybe twice a month, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on what I'm feeling. But even when I'm not using it, it ends up being a perfect storage space for all of my pots and pans. And if I didn't have an oven, those would just be going in a drawer anyway. This last little section down here is where I store my Dometic fridge. I originally really liked this fridge, but honestly, it has been continuously breaking on me and doing some weird, funky things, and I really wish that I had a freezer in my van as well, specifically for ice. I made one really exciting update to my van last year, and that was getting the Chinese diesel heater installed in my van. It's pretty much the only thing I didn't do on my van personally, basically because of sheer laziness, but it was so nice to have it done for me. My van is actually diesel, and so the guy who did it was able to tap directly into my fuel line, and it has just made a world of difference. Even though I have a pretty well insulated van, I do have windows, and to be honest, even if you don't have windows and you have a really well insulated van, if you were in cold places, it's going to end up getting really cold at night. My first two winters in the van were pretty miserable, and I ended up killing many plants because of how cold it was inside. You can get the really expensive Obasto heater. I think they're about $1,000. For all I know, they last a lot longer, but this one has worked excellently for me. All you need to do is search Chinese diesel heater on Amazon and it'll pop right up. I have had to change its glow plug one time, but it was really easy, so I would maybe recommend purchasing one of those. If you do go with this model, it's pretty cheap to do that too and the special bit that you need alongside the glow plug. This area is what I call the bathroom in my van. Obviously, I end up doing dishes in the sink as well, but I ended up using butcher block for all of my countertops and I just cut out the piece for my sink, which is really nice because I can cover all the dishes that I don't feel like doing and it looks really clean and tidy in my space all the time. That's one of the benefits of picking one of these undermount sinks. I will say mine is pretty shallow and that is because underneath it I have my nature's head composting toilet. I almost exclusively use my nature's head composting toilet. I rarely go in public places. I honestly don't understand how any van lifers do without having a toilet in their van. 
That being said, the Nature's Head is $1,000. It was a very expensive toilet, but seeing as I use it exclusively, I feel like I've gotten my money's worth. There are definitely much more affordable toilets in the market, so you can definitely find one that doesn't cost $1,000. I have things like all of my toiletries in this drawer and then underneath here is where all of my utilities go like my broom and my fire extinguisher and my trash and random miscellaneous things that I might need. One of the things I love most about having this utility closet is that my trash is out of sight and also out of smell. I know a lot of van lifers don't have a designated place for their trash and it's really really nice to have it out of the way and in its own space. I tried to film this segment at the last spot I was at, but it was so windy outside that you could not hear a single thing that I was saying. So this is Maddie from the future again, here to talk to you about my outdoor shower. I really don't regret not having an indoor shower in my van at all, but what I do wish is that the water heater that I did install actually worked. If any of you guys know about a hot water heater van installer in Central California, hit me up with those deets. But anyways, my hot water never worked and so what I'm working Working with is a cold outdoor shower. I do have a curtain that I can hang up between my van doors but I've never used it a single time because anytime that I do end up using this outdoor shower it's when no one else is around and so I don't need to and I just wear a bathing suit just to be safe. Basically I have this nice little hose faucet right here and all I have to do is hook it up to the connection, turn on the cold water and I can do a quick military shower outside the back of my van. It's definitely come in handy when I need to wash off Eliza's paws or give her a full bath when she decides to roll an animal carcass. Um, <laughs> and I have taken some showers when it's really hot outside, but I don't use it all that often. I prefer to just heat up a kettle of water and wash my hair in the sink and scrub myself down with a hot soapy rag. Again, emphasis on hot water. I think if I did have a working hot water heater, I would use this a lot more often. I tried my friend Sarah Yaks when we did a van swap. We did a whole video about that. Wow, it's so nice. Oh my gosh. Chef's kiss. That was by far and large my favorite part about getting to use her van. I also have my water inlet right here. It's just this. I just connect a hose with a standard garden attachment and I can fill it pretty much anywhere. And I have an adapter for places like Baja where it can be a little bit tricky to find garden hose attachments. I don't have a fancy water meter to see how much water I have, but it's pretty simple. I just lift this lid and then I can see how much water I have. This area is my dining room and living room and office and bedroom all in one. I have the standard dinette setup, which basically means this table can pop off of its lagoon mount. And then I can fit it in the center where I drilled in these extra wood panels. Then these back cushions come out from behind me down into the center and I have a queen sized bed. The main drawback of this system is that you have less room for storage. I know some people will raise the entire dinette setup higher so that you do have a little more room for storage. But in my case, I don't have much of a garage at all. The main asset of this kind of setup is that I have a very spacious feeling van. My van feels far more spacious than any of my friends who have a fixed bed and that is a priority for me. I think I would do the exact same setup if I were to do it again, maybe lifting the bed about half a foot, but I do like having the option of switching between the table and the dinette. That being said, there is one special addition that I added to my van at one point about half a year ago maybe. I cut this piece of plywood to size and then stained it and if I'm too lazy to switch my bed over into office mode, all I have to do is whip this out. I just keep it right next to my counter. I pull out my office drawer and it slides in perfectly just like that. I love this. I've used it a lot since I've made it and I just, again, I love having versatility in my van, having all of these different options for how to use the space and that's what works for me. Underneath these cushions, there is a lot of storage. On this side, I house all of my plumbing and water. I have 30 gallons of fresh water and that lasts me anywhere between two to three weeks as a single lady with her dog. On this side, I have all of my electrical. I have 400 watts of solar power going into 400 amp hours of batteries, but it's only 200 usable amp hours of batteries because I do have hybrid gel instead of lithium. I know a lot of people really do love lithium batteries and once you make the switch, I know that it's hard to go back for people. That being said, I really love my batteries and they are so, so affordable. So I probably would get them again just because they are about a quarter of the price as one lithium battery. I also store a lot of random things that can fit into tight corners in both of those compartments with room for things like camping gear and extra tools. I have plumbing and electrical tools under there as well. 
there is one more area of storage that I wanted to show you guys and that is right underneath where I'm sitting. This entire thing can slide off and it is full to the brim of storage. At one point I did make a little bit of an upgrade though because beforehand I had to slide this on or off to access anything and now this front compartment has access using this panel that I added some velcro to which is extremely convenient because I have my drill and other tools down there and it also stores some of my shoes as well. The last major upgrade I've made to this van since I moved in it is getting Wi-Fi all of the time. For the first two years, I did not have Wi-Fi very often and I would have to drive long distances in order to find coffee shops so that I could upload my videos every week. And now I have Starlink. Starlink is a pretty expensive Wi-Fi. It's about $700 to buy the dish satellite and then $150 per month. I split this cost with my friends, which really helps, except for when I'm traveling alone like I am now. It's truly been so helpful because it means I can boondock for as long as I want or at least until I run out of groceries without ever worrying about Wi-Fi. Those are all the big spaces in the van. I think these last few touches are things I added to the van to make it feel more like me. I added a bookshelf. Reading is hugely important to me and I love that thing so much. It's both aesthetic and extremely useful. I have a bunch of plants in my van. I will say having plants is really hard. I'm constantly driving to different climates with different conditions and that really stresses plants out so keep that in mind if you want to put some plants in your van I think it's worth it I love having some live greenery in my space and I love taking care of them but it is difficult I love the cubby behind my sink it makes it so that I can easily access things like my painting supplies and my makeup and jewelry finding little pockets of storage is so so important in a van and the other one I wanted to mention is not specific to me but it is my dimmer switches I have dimmers on both my kitchen and my overhead lights and I absolutely love them for the ambiance especially when I'm having a bunch of friends over for dinner I don't really like having harsh LEDs on when the sun is going down and so being able to dim those adds a really nice intimate feel with my friends. Overall, I really love my van. It is my home, it is my safe haven, it has treated me so well over these past two years. Obviously, I kind of wish I had done the floor and the ceiling a little differently, so make sure that if you're building a van, be really mindful about the materials for the foundation of your home and be well researched before you do the install. And if you can fit a fridge with a freezer, try to do that too. But with that, that is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so much. Maybe I'll do another one of these in two years if I'm still living in the van, which would honestly be kind of crazy to me, but I wouldn't be surprised at the same time. I don't know, we'll see. But before you go, I do think that Maddie from the future has a little more information about that giveaway, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. You guys, I've never done a giveaway on the channel and I'm so, so excited. I'm going to be giving away two of the 32 ounce bottle bottle water bottles in addition to this beautiful 40 ounce water bottle. All you have to do is leave a comment down below of your favorite activity to do outside and which water bottle you would like if you are randomly selected. I'm going to pull all of these names into a lottery system and then I'll have the winners move over to Instagram so that we can direct message about how I can best reach you with your prize. I'm so, so excited. I'm going to announce the winners in next week's video and we will move on from there. Just a little double thank you for watching and I will see you all very, very soon. Bye. There's a loud plane. I'm gonna drink. It's so windy outside that dirt from my plant keeps spilling onto my countertops whenever my door's open. <laughs> I almost excuse... <laughs> It'd be too windy to do this. Might have to just do it inside. Ow. <laughs> Hydrate, everybody. Stay hydrated.